I was talking to the students, and they we are, we were researching. So at least fourteen percent of the students who were opting for law, they were able to clear the examination. So. So good evening, students. My name is Vishal, and I'm a faculty of Pewters IS. Students, I take law optional. So basically, <coughs> students keep asking me, asking me, sir, is the law optional viable? Even the students who are from law background, they keep asking me, sir, is it viable? I say viable in what sense? Sir, will opting for law fetch us good marks? So I think the question, the answer to this question is, ki <coughs> yes. Certain subjects are do scoring. Certain subjects do have an advantage, but it does not mean that you won't be able to score good marks in other subjects. Students who are from law background and even students who are not from law background, if they develop command over the relevant subject and syllabus, so they'll be able to fetch good marks provided they adhere to certain strategies. So there is nothing that UPSC has against law. UPSC has no bias against law. So, if you are writing good answers, if you have command over the syllabus as well as the subjects, so you will be able to fetch good marks provided you follow certain tricks and strategies. So, yes, law taking law is viable. <coughs> Students have taken law and they have cleared the examination, civil services examination. Students have. <coughs> I was talking. To the students and they we are we were researching so at least 14% of the students who were opting for law they were able to clear the examination so law is viable provided you <coughs> cover the syllabus you develop command over the subjects as well as you adhere to certain strategies so in this video we'll talk about what would be the strategy for <coughs> scoring good marks in law option first of all students we have to understand the syllabus there is no alternative of understanding the syllabus and for that we have to read the syllabus thoroughly plus we have to read the previous year questions i'll discuss discuss about them in few minutes so first of all just a brief overview of the syllabus see <coughs> in law optional we have two papers and in two papers we have these six major topics or subjects rather paper 1 consists of these two subjects constitutional law and international constitutional and administrative law and international law <clears throat> a good thing about law optional is that he got to cover the constitution under the section of constitutional and international law as well you will be able to cover or you will get to cover the constitution in your polity section as well so <clears throat> students who opt for law they get an added advantage that by reading the constitution for the purpose of law optional they get to cover or they get to develop a command over polity and constitution that help them in the gs section as well so first paper consists of constitutional and administrative law and international law paper 2 consists of four major subjects law of crimes law of contracts and mercantile law law of torts and contemporary legal developments students who are from law background or who have done their llbs and llms from universities so they will be able to recognize these topics students who are from law background so <clears throat> these are just six topics students in law cover at least 35 to 40 subjects during their undergrad and postgrad programs so syllabus of law is not that much syllabus is concise that's so that's because of that you have to understand the syllabus and memorize it thoroughly paper 1 consists of constitutional and administrative law as well as international law paper 2 consists of law of crimes law of torts mercantile law and contracts plus contemporary legal developments so now we'll discuss <coughs> the way to cover all of these topics and students remind you even if you cover these five major subjects 
you will be able to cover a majority or major part of your syllabus i'm not recommending that you leave this contemporary legal developments but what you have to do is you have to develop command over these five major subjects because most of the questions are asked from these five major subjects contemporary legal developments you have to cover there is no alternative but in case due to shortage of time or deficiency of time you are not able to cover contemporary legal developments still you can be assured that by developing command over these five subjects or revising these five subjects thoroughly you will be able to answer most of the questions in paper 1 and paper 2 because you have a lot of choices in paper 1 and paper 2 i'll discuss about them as well in the coming few minutes so now we'll talk about syllabus in brief after that we'll talk about the strategy that you have to opt to achieve good marks see in the constitutional and administrative law a major part is constitutional law you can expect 3 to 4 questions from administrative law and that too from selective topics see under the constitutional law we have to cover topics such as and mind you this is a theoretical subject so you have to understand it thoroughly and conceptually we have to cover topics such as the principle of constitutionalism constitution and the basic features of indian constitution then the topic of fundamental right it is very important so in our classes we read this topic of fundamental rights in great detail public interest litigation legal aid and legal services authority forms the second topic relationship between fr that is fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy fourth is the position of the president and his powers plus the relations of president and council of ministers and the provisions governing the relation of president with the council of ministers then we have governor and his powers student you can expect at least four to five questions from these topics the next important topic is supreme court and high courts manner of appointment of judges of supreme court and high court as well their power functions and jurisdiction it is also important topic next is the next are the provisions regarding the federal structure of the constitution so we have to discuss the legislative and administrative or we can say the distribution of legislative powers between union and the state as well as administrative relations between union and state then we have to discuss the provisions regarding the union public service commission as well as the state public service commission as well as the election commission so all of this topic you will be already covering in your gs section provided in constitution law we have to substantiate our answers with the help of relevant case laws as well as we have to lay more focus on the conceptual part then emergency provisions provisions regarding amendment of the constitution so till here we have the constitutional law then four or five topics they are from administrative law like delegated legislation and its constitutionality that means when the executive forms the legislation general legislation is formulated by the legislature we will talk about delegated legislation as well as in what conditions delegated legislation can be termed as unconstitutional by the courts separation of powers and constitutional governance judicial review of administrative action this is very important on what grounds an administrative action can be struck down by the courts and next is ombudsman so students <coughs> i beseech you to develop good command over the constitutional and administrative law because you will be able to <coughs> cover more than 60% of the syllabus of paper one if you develop command over constitutional law rest 40% will develop over international law international law is a <coughs> the syllabus of international law is a bit conceptual and theoretical but good thing is you know upsc ask questions from specific topics as well as it ask direct questions such as upsc has in past asked questions such as 
nature of international law relationship between international law and municipal law state recognition theories of state recognition it has also <coughs> asked question from <coughs> territory jurisdiction of states and the concept of extradition and asylum direct questions it has asked question from topics such as treaties how treaties are formed so it basically it is, this topic is covered in vienna convention on law of treaties so we have to read relevant section of vienna convention on law of treaties but good thing is upsc will ask direct questions un clause united nation convention on law of seas this topic is covered under un clause so, so we have to read direct <coughs> relevant provisions of un clause again questions most of the questions would be direct so you have if you have read the <coughs> theories regarding or the theories given by different jurists <coughs> regarding the definition of and nature of international law you will be able to write down most of your answers united nations the organs <coughs> and the powers of united nations we do have to read relevant provisions of united nation charter like we have the upsc still asked the question regarding peaceful settlement of disputes and the modes under which the settlements or international <coughs> disputes can be settled as well as un under un charter when is the recourse to force be permissible upsc has asked question regarding in past in past upsc asked question regarding the principles of international humanitarian law so we have to read certain provisions of geneva conventions and sometimes it asks question from international organization monetary organizations such as wto and imf apart from that <coughs> this topic protection and improvement of human environment it is contemporary topic because the <coughs> conventions or treaties regarding international environmental law it keeps going on international environmental law or <coughs> the concern regarding in inter, uh, cons, international concern regarding environment is a contemporary thing so you have to keep tap on what treaties what conventions or what steps are taken at the international level regarding protection of environment and the legislative framework for that so this is a contemporary topic upc has asked question from <coughs> environment or we can say the efforts made internationally for the protection of environment then we have paper 2 in which majorly will have topics such as law of crimes so we have to read bns bhartiya nay sahayta students keep asking me sir do we have to read ipc or bns and i keep telling them you have to read bns ipc is gone it is repealed so currently we have the criminal law of bns but the good thing about bns is in most of the sections are peri materia with ipc barring the change in numbering so we have to read bns and there are specific provisions we don't have to read entire bns it is a lengthy and voluminous we have to read certain chapters or provisions of bns regarding these topics apart from bns under law of crimes we have <coughs> three major topics that is prevention of corruption act 1988 <coughs> one good thing about upsc optional is we don't have to read the procedural part while reading the procedural part we have to memorize sections so in upsc we don't have the procedural we only have the substantive part so in <coughs> prevention of corruption act we only have to read the substantive part and upsc ask direct questions from <coughs> prevention of corruption act or the acts like protection of civil rights act or scsc prevention of atrocities act we don't have to read the procedural part we only have to read the substantive part for example a question two years back there was a question <coughs> what is the meaning of undue advantage under prevention of corruption act now it is a single section a student who has read and understood the meaning of undue advantage under prevention of corruption act would be able to write the answer in a good manner then we have a small <coughs> section of contractual mercantile law for this we have to read 
certain acts such as contract act contract act is very important and we do have topics such as formation of contracts performance of contracts factors vitiating free consent apart from that <coughs> under contract act we have certain specific contracts such as contract of agency apart from that we have to read sales of goods act partnerships act negotiable instruments act as well as arbitration and conciliation act 1996 so we'll have to read the substantive part and you can expect at least two to three questions from topics such as sales of goods act partnership act and in that also we only have to read formation and dissolution of partnership we don't have to read all of the partnership act and there's one major topic that is gaining recognition nowadays is standard form contracts standard form of contracts are the type of contracts in which the contract is mainly designed by one party generally while formulating the contract the parties have negotiation but in certain type of contracts only one party <clears throat> has a major role in formulation of a contract and other party does not play a major role in formulation of the contract such as the contract of insurance so what are the legal principles guiding standard form contracts and the <coughs> decision given by the courts we'll read under the topic of standard form contracts we have a minor topic such as law of torts and certain <coughs> provisions in law of torts so for this law of torts we have to read the case law we have to read the case law for all of our topics but obviously the law of torts is not codified in india we have to cover the entire tort or law of torts from case laws by reading relevant case law the syllabus of torts is concise and you can expect four to five questions from the topic or the subject of law of torts apart from that we have a provision or a chapter on consumer protection act 1986 we'll read relevant portions of consumer protection act and in the sixth topic contemporary legal developments we have sub topics such as pil public interest litigation types of ipr intellectual property rights in india <clears throat> it act certain provisions of it act competition law only the concept of competition law as well as the purpose of competition law and major statutes such as statutes that are governing the environmental law as well as rti so this portion i'll say you have to cover at the last so we have to cover the five major portion firstly that we have already discussed and this provision this section we have to cover at the very last i'm not saying that you should leave this section but you have to cover first firstly those five sections that we have discussed and then we have to cover this sixth section or subjects so now why i'm saying this because in upsc you do get a lot of choices if i discuss the structure of the paper so in paper 1 as well as in paper 2 you have two sections a and b both of them consist of four four questions 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 eight in which one and five are compulsory so in paper 1 we'll have constitutional law in question 1 and uh, international law in paper 5 this questions also contain sub questions like 1 a b c 2 a b c in total you have to attempt five questions from each <coughs> paper so 1 and 5 is compulsory now you are left with three questions so among these six questions we have to or from these six questions you have to attempt any three provided you attempt at least one question from every section so if you attempt one question suppose question number 6 so you can attempt any two questions from here so that means from eight questions you have to attempt five questions and attempt those five questions in which you have the entire command so suppose under question paper question 
और क्वेश्चन टू वी हैव सब सेक्शन सच एस टू ए बी सी नाउ इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड एंड यू नो ऑल ऑफ दिस सब क्वेश्चंस देन ओनली अटेम्प्ट क्वेश्चन टू अदरवाइज अटेम्प्ट क्वेश्चन थ्री और फोर दैट मींस यू कैन नॉट अटेम्प्ट इफ यू इफ यू अंडर क्वेश्चन टू इफ यू नो ओनली टू सब क्वेश्चंस दैट मींस द थर्ड क्वेश्चन यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू अटेम्प्ट properly so go for those questions in the <coughs> choices section that you know entirely if you know that under third question you know all the three sub sections or third three sub questions properly then go for question 3 so in upsc you'll get a lot of choices you have to cover only five questions from eight question that's why i was saying you just cover or we can say firstly cover your five major subjects and after that will cover contemporary legal development so in case you don't get the proper time for revision or you don't get time for revision make sure you read five subjects properly constitutional administrative law international law law of crimes law of torts and <coughs> contract and mercantile law now <clears throat> we'll talk about the strategy strategy how to the strategy is very basic first thing is <clears throat> we have to focus on relatively important subjects i told you we have to focus on those subjects that upsc ask frequently from for in our syllabus we have five major important subjects so you have to cover them first and contemporary legal de development you can read <coughs> after covering those five major subjects second is you have to solve the pyq without solving the previous year questions or without understanding the previous year questions you won't be able to understand the format that is used by upsc for asking the questions so you have to understand pyq i generally discuss pyq in my class or while reading while teaching sorry while teaching i tell the keep telling the students that from this portion you can expect this kind of a question so understanding the format of questions is very important and for the understanding proper understanding of format you have to read pyqs go for at least 6 to 7 years read pyqs of 6 to 7 years so you will get to know what are the important topics that upsc keep asking from questions from <clears throat> and try to cover those topic first i'm not saying don't cover other rest of the topics but focus on those those topics that up upsc keeps asking question from like i told you the concept of constitutionalism ups it is a favorite topic of upsc upsc ask question from this so you have to understand by a thorough reading of pyqs that what are the questions that occur frequently in the examination paper third is very important a student of law apart from command on apart from developing command on the substantive provisions he has to develop command over the case laws because you have to substantiate your answer with relevant case laws suppose i am talking about article 15 article 16 upsc generally ask question from the topic of fundamental rights so if i am able to cover <coughs> article 15 and 16 i am able to describe relevant provisions of article 15 and 16 i should substantiate my articles with case law suppose if we are reading article 15 you must know mr balaji versus <coughs> state of my sort and if you are reading article 16 you must know indira sani versus union of india so we have to substantiate our <coughs> legal provisions with case laws non reading case laws is not an alternative you have to read case laws and you have to substantiate your reasoning with case laws same goes with all of the subjects in ipc in bns sorry in law of crimes 
we have to substantiate our reasoning with the help of case law upsc can ask you in the question paper a fact situation and you have to invoke a relevant provision from bns or prevention of corruption act so to substantiate your reasoning that why a particular provision is getting attracted under a particular fact situation you have to <coughs> provide the relevant section as well as you have to provide the decided case law so understanding and reading and memorizing case laws will help you a lot in substantiating your answers third is revision for at least four times students i keep telling students that adhere to limited sources you don't have to read five books for a single subject read one book for a single subject and revise is five times <coughs> for suppose for bns bharatiya nai sahita you are reading kd gaur or psa pillai i am talking about the names of the books if you reading kd gaur make sure you read it or the relevant sections of K, uh, in the kd gaur at least four to five times because <coughs> for you to develop a long term memory of the relevant information relevant material it takes approximately 4 to 5 readings and as you keep reading again and again you will develop more and more clarity over the concerned topics so i keep saying to the students the key in clearing this examination is revision does not matter how many topics you have read for one time the thing is ki how many top topics are you able to revise multiple times and if you keep revising topics <coughs> you'll develop conceptual clarity over the topics as well as you'll be able to memorize the topics in a very <coughs> clear way so go for before your examination and one more thing see students your first priority should be the preliminary examination once you clear the preliminary examination you have to focus on mains obviously before <coughs> preliminary examinations before 4 to 5 months or at least 4 months you can prepare your mains you can you have to lay down or you have to lay major focus on mains as well as optional the thing is as soon as you are only left with 4 months stop the mains or we can say stop the optional keep focusing on preliminary examination because once you clear the pt you will be able to take mains if you have developed command over your optional subjects but you are not able to clear pre that is not much of relevance so first thing is keep reading keep preparing your optional subjects as soon as you are left with 4 months for preliminary examination stop optional move on to preliminary examination after clearing pre move immediately to gs section of the mains as well as optional optional subjects can decide your selection and rank is in this examination because it is worth 500 marks and you have to choose those subjects so you got a choice as well as weightage in optional subjects so keep sure or ensure that you develop proper command over the optional subjects because it will help you in gaining selection as well as good rank fourth everybody knows practice answer writing as much as you can because you have to write most of your answers in a very concise format you have to use approximately 250 words so writing a major concept or noting down or writing down a major concept or doctrine of law in 250 words along with case laws is a challenging task so you will develop command over answer writing once you keep practicing it so i say at least practice when you are studying for mains and optional you have to go or you have to practice answer writing along with your reading part the topics that you read the topics that you read <coughs> for the optional you have to take down important pyqs and you have to try <coughs> write down those answers of those pyqs and there is no alternative to answer writing plus you should also develop a good speed speed you will only develop with a certain practice of answer writing if you don't do enough practice you won't be able to do speed you won't be able to gain speed and once you are able to gain speed believe me you will be able to write answers at a faster rate because in mains 
what is important is what is as important as <coughs> having command over the subjects is that you finish the answers suppose in mains uh, optional paper upsc is asking you have to attempt five questions along with their sub questions you have to try to solve all of them try to solve all of questions in within the stipulated time so even if you don't perform good in some of the questions still if you have written those answers relevant answer for those questions cumulatively you will be able to achieve or score good marks so answer writing is important one for you to write concise and relevant answers secondly for you to develop speed so that's why start writing start practicing answer writing and at last is command over the legal current affairs because sometimes or most of the time rather upsc do ask the current legal affairs so <clears throat> you have to substantiate your answers with the current legal affairs for example you have to keep yourself apprised of the legal current affairs important judgment of the supreme court as well as important judgments of high courts on the relevant topics suppose in 2023 supreme court <coughs> gave a judgment supreme versus union of india in that judgment supreme court was deciding an issue regarding <coughs> recognition of same sex marriages so basically the petitioner contended that by not recognizing the same sex marriages their fundamental rights are getting violated the supreme court held that under the indian constitution or fundamental rights you do have a right to choose your partners but you don't have a fundamental right to marry if at all a law providing or we can say a provision regarding the recognition of same sex marriages has to be made it has to be made by the root of parliament judiciary cannot pass a direction recognizing same sex marriages or marriages <coughs> in relations that are parallel to heterosexual marriages so it is an important judgment so it is basically laying down jurisprudence on fundamental rights as well it is laying down jurisprudence on <coughs> matters related to marriage as well as it is laying down jurisprudence on fundamental rights the supreme court held that by not recognizing the fundamental right or we can say by not recognizing the right of recognition of <coughs> heterosexual or we can say homosexual marriages no fundamental right is getting violated so <coughs> you have to substantiate or answers with legal current affairs if they are any. so students by following these basic strategies you can achieve good marks provided you cover your syllabus you cover your entire syllabus and before that you understand the syllabus as well as pyq so one thing is understanding the syllabus second thing is understanding the pyqs third thing is covering your entire syllabus <coughs> fourth thing is practicing answer writing as much as you can fifth thing is you have to substantiate your answers with case laws and sixth thing is you have to read legal current affairs relevant judgments or the judgments of supreme court and high courts that are relevant for our syllabus of law option so students <coughs> this was a strategy this was a camp comprehensive strategy for those students who want to achieve good marks in law optional so <clears throat> we'll end up here move for more of such informative videos please stay tuned to plutus is